I wanted to take a slightly different tact on the evening um, around HR. I'm not involved in HR, I kind of don't like HR too much, but that's fine. Um, I'm, I'm going to talk about biohacking. Who knows what biohacking is here? Great, okay, so biohacking is the practice of just making all the shortcuts to get to a biological end state. We're born in this body, we're born with this mind, but I believe that we're not born with everything. The first way that we can biohack is, is diet, paleo diets. And, Atkins diets and eating salad with your boyfriend like this, you know? Uh, you know. So, you know, what you put in, you get out. And, and you know, eating a bag of, bag of sun chips does not make for a good time. But if you do eat that bag of sun chips, you, you then get down to the gym, you kick some ass, cross it. Who does CrossFit here? Who's got a personal trainer here? Come on, seriously, you need to get fit. So, so, so your organization is as fit as the employees as well. Um, and what I want to do, everyone in the seats, sit up. Can you all sit up? Just hold in your belly a little bit, uh, squeeze your butt cheeks, uh, and just lift up your head a little bit. Spinal health, and you can do this exercise at work to keep your spinal health going. It's really, really important. Um, also, um, who, who's ever gone to work and actually gone for a nap on the couch? Yes. It's all about the naps. 20 minutes, uh, 20 minute nap will, will completely revitalize how you're thinking, how you're operating, and you actually have a better uh, work-life balance during the day. And then you've got organizations like Kyocera that use wisdom and love as core facets of, of their company philosophy. Amoeba management is what they do, um, and it's about elevating their minds. It's a pillar of their organization. That's a 60-year-old strategy. Um, and then there's some people that do yoga here. Lululemon people, you do yoga, right? Who else does yoga here? Yeah, who does yoga? Because you don't go to personal trainers. Okay, but it opens your mind. It opens your mind, and, and uh, if you uh, if you rig your sacrum, it's good for the sex life. Um, okay, um, you can actually also get a little funky and start altering your brain waves. This is think it's a headband, and it fundamentally changes how your brain waves work, so you actually have a happier state of mind. Why not get funky with some of this biohacking, right? Um, who's using a, a, an Oculus Rift, right? Well, you, you can cure PTSD with an Oculus Rift. You can go into different mental states. You can really induce new ways of thinking and new ways of working by using virtual reality. This is starting to get really interesting, right, what we can do in the workplace. Uh, this is my friend Chris. Uh, Chris has got about 700 systems quantifying his every action and his every movement. He categorizes everything in his Google Calendar, and he's lost over 100 pounds in, in about three years. Um, he's optimized his life. He's kicking ass right now. He's the world's most connected man. And then when you get going, do you ever find those days when you can write 15 articles, you can do all your meetings, you get everything done, that means that you're in the flow state. And if you're in the flow state, it means that you can do more, you're elevated, your wisdom is really in touch, and you, you're really the life and soul of the organization. But once you're the life and soul of the organization, do you really want to stay put in Vancouver? Why not get on a plane and work in Bali? Biohack, change your environment. Why not? Work in the sunshine, or work at night and then be in the sunshine all day. Um, but that was just entry-level biohacking. Easy peasy, right? Let's get really interesting. Let's take some risks. I do not condone any of these next uh, activities, but try them if you want. Okay, the first one. Um, cryotherapy. Some people go into these cryo tanks for one to three minutes every day um, with their hands and their feet covered, and if you're a guy with your uh, modesty covered as well, and drop their body temperature to minus 240 degrees Fahrenheit. It regenerates the, the, the body. Um, anyone done 23andMe and have their genome sequenced? Yeah, there's a few people in here. Why don't you get all of your employees' genome sequenced so you can work out if they're really good, healthy employees? And if they're not, maybe work out ways to exit them out of the organization. Um, I've, actually got, I've, I've actually got a micro, I've, I've got a microchip in my hand. This is my friend Amos' hands. Um, I can actually open doors. I could program it to control the coffee machine at work if I want. Why don't we get rid of key cards? Who loses their key cards? Yeah, you don't have to because we can implant you with chips. Or, say if you've got a job that you need night vision, you can just actually inject uh, chlorine E6 into your eyes and actually have night vision. Why not? Warehouse men. Cool. Warehouse women. Okay. Uh, and then we've got the subject of, of smart drugs, nootropics. Is, does anyone take nootropics here? Okay, it's the idea that you can actually use supplements and you can use nootropics to um, have heightened met mental alertness. And you can get more done in more time. This is legal stuff. And then you've got psychedelics. LSD, mescaline, psilocybin. Who's done those in here? <laughs> Yay, someone said yes. Okay. Um, the computer revolution happened because of, of psychedelics in Stanford University and the mother of all demos. And to end this, if you don't believe me, 
Steve, said, Steve Jobs said that taking LSD was one or two of the most important things in his life. And I saw someone the other day carrying an iMac into a building, wrapped in a towel, carrying it like a baby, because that's deep, empathetic understanding of your customers. Maybe we need to open our minds, and maybe we need to biohack a little bit. Thank you very much.